Hey, what's up guys? It's Apollo here. Hope you guys are doing well and today we are playing more Third Age Total War Reforged. This is an online battle and this is a battle worthy of the gods. It is a great battle and it's also a very unique battle because this is a sub commander battle which is brand new to my YouTube channel but not brand new to YouTube. I do want to give a big shout out to THFE Productions. I don't know if he came up with this idea or he just plays it a lot regardless. I'm going to give him a shout out. His channel's uh, linked down below. He does a lot of sub commander battles which are very very entertaining. Also he does a lot of like documentary type videos on historical events and even some fantasy lore. So he's got fantastic videos probably the highest quality videos in the total war community so check him out give him some love and if you like his content be sure to subscribe to his channel all right so if you're new to sub commander battles well you are in luck because it's very simple there's four players on each team this time we're doing it obviously in third age and it's good versus evil so on this side we have the good guys and this is how it works so there's four players each team and they're all sub commanders so for example the elves here they are only bringing a section of the force and he's only bringing the archers so OP is the player name and he's bringing the archers and then over here on the other side we've got Isengard he's commanded by as the dwarf he is bringing only pikemen so you get what it, you get it it's very simple you just bring a section of the force and you only worry about that you only command that part of the force pretty easy to understand let's now move on to the army comps and the player names and then we'll get started with this epic fight so let's start with uh, we'll start with the good guys because I am on the good guys side I'm bringing some Rohan because everybody wants to see some Rohan they don't get enough love so I am bringing the Cav Force for this army. I have two units of Royal Guard with some upgrades. I also have my General and the Royal Lords Heavy Cav. This is actually a new unit to reforge. Looks pretty cool. Nice Heavy Cav there. In the back, I am bringing one Riders of the Fold, which is a Missile Cav. And then I have two units of the um, Heavy Lancers, the Rohan's Heavy Lancers. So very cool. Let's move on to the Elves now. Again, Sylvan Elves commanded by OP. He's got some Elder Royal Guard, which I believe is his General unit. And then he's got some, uh, actually, you know what, the Royal Council is the one with the general. And then he has two units of the Royal Guard. And then in the front, he does have some, you know what, let's pause it. Looks like the, you know, we'll, we'll keep it playing. It's doing slow motion. And then he has uh, the heavy archers, a couple units of heavy archers in the front line. Also, I wanted to mention that we're only allowed to bring six units to the battlefield. So keep a mental note of that. And then moving on to Gondor, who's going to be the spear and pike force. Uh, Gondor commanded by Gearhawk. He's got some Tirith Wardens. And then over in the center, he is bringing some guards of Osgiliath. And I believe that's that's mostly it. Yeah, more more Wardens in the back. Yeah, he does have some Fountain Guard protecting the flank. Very nice. And then the final army, the Dwarves, commanded by Don Haka. And he is bringing Sons of Durin. He has some Guards of Kaza Doom, which I think he mostly has Guards of Kaza Doom. And then over here, he's got Balin's Guard. And here's more Sons of Durin. So that's it for the dwarves. A pretty small force, but he brought a lot of elite troops. Let's now move on to the baddies who are advancing forward. So Isengard, again commanded by As the Dwarf, bringing all Urukai pikemen. And then we'll move on to the orcs of Gundabad, commanded by Glowbox. And he's bringing guardians of Karn Doom. He also has other troops scattered over here. He's bringing a lot of guardians of Karn Doom and hammers. Witch Realm Hammer Guard. This unit is a monster of a unit. They're so devastating. Very, very devastating. It looks like he's got some black guard in the back, which his general is located in. Now moving on to the next army, which is uh, Harad, who is bringing the archers, commanded by Queen K. He has, wow, he's got a large force here. So he is bringing some royal archers, so two units of royal archers, and then he's got some Casimir rangers, and then he's got a couple units of the Hashari shadows that are, it looks like they're going to be bombarding the elven arrows. And then the final force, which is the cav force, it is rune, commanded by Bobbington. He has some brotherhood of the lance, I think about a couple units of them. And he also has some cav going around the flank, so he's got some Varig horse archers, and some wind riders of the Khan. And then way over here on the other side, he's got two units of uh, wind riders, I believe. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for his forces. So let's do normal speed and begin the battle. All right, so Isengard, yeah, he's being super aggressive here, trying to get his pikes quickly into the fight. 
but you can see that the archers are really focusing down the elven archers which I think is a I think it's a little bit of a mistake there I think he should have used most of his ammo on these I mean this is just a great great deployment here of these uh, these archers from Queen K he's using them so effectively they're getting lots of shot off shots off at the same time but the elves on the other hand I'm not a huge fan of this deployment because he's really got them you know the two rows is not really helping him it's it's putting a lot of arrows on him at once so I think he could have deployed his forces a little bit better there but you know they're still elven archers they're still gonna be very very excellent so here we go, the first first uh, charge here of infantry, the pikes versus the dwarves. The dwarves, are they going to stand their ground? It looks like they are going to stand their ground, but they are pushing up. Look at this, uh, Bobbington pushing up his general, and I, I am going to... Well, he, this was a mistake. He did not mean to do this, so in return, I'm going to go ahead and send in some of my royal guard to try to counter his cav and meet him in the middle of the battlefield. So he's charging in some uh, some pikes as we speak which is not a good thing and he's trying to get his general out of there which he's actually getting hit hard and I think he he got he, he got pretty banged up some from uh, some friendly fire so just like that the general is gone for rune which was a big mistake on his part and the Isengard pikemen are easily losing this battle because uh, they lost so many troops to uh, to elven archer fire all right so let's you know what, we're gonna, like I said, we're going to be doing a lot of slow motion during this fight because it gets really intense and really tactical. Now, my mindset as the, the Cav is just supporting the infantry and supporting the archers and just waiting for an opportunity to strike. Uh, now, this is a pretty tough situation because there's really not that much space to flank around. There's just tons and tons of infantry that I, I, you know, I've got to try to get around to try to hammer an anvil, or, or just charge, not hammer an anvil, but charge the Haradrim archers because they're out in the open. Nothing really protecting them, and they are chewing up our army because the elven archers, look at this. Look at all the casualties from the elven archers. It's because of that deployment. He's just not able to compete with the Haradrim archers. So we'll go back to normal speed. And I do, look at this. This is the moment that I find a an opening. It's a small one, but it's mostly friendlies on the side of the opening. So I'm going to push through here. Unfortunately, some of my cab is going to get cab is going to get caught, but I'm just going to power through it. I might lose a couple soldiers. But look at this. I broke free. I'm now going for the archers in the very back ranks. Come on, charge in there. Give them hell, boys. Let's see what you can do. This is excellent. Nice. So I go after the Castamere's Chosen. They, they seem like a very squishy archer unit. So there we go. I'm going to leave them in combat for a little bit longer, and I'm going to just walk away. Walk away. Now I'm going to pinball around the battlefield. Now that there's a, a, an opening in the front lines, I'm able to maneuver my cab. And now I'm going to send my royal guard over to the backs of the Isengard pikemen. Here we go. This is going to be delicious and nutritious because they instantly break. Look at all the arrows flying down. That is ridiculous. Now I'm going to maneuver out of there and just keep on pushing. Keep on going. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to maneuver, get away from the, the Witch Realm uh, uh, Hammer Guard. And now I'm going to move for the sh the Hashari Shadow Guard, or Shadows. So I'm just looking for anything that's in a vul vulnerable position. Vulner vulnerable location. Yeah, unfortunately, okay, so I didn't get a charge off there. That's because I was microing in the back because I was so worried about his horses coming around this way. So Harad sent horses all the way around, and now he's got some Varric horse archers. So I'm sending over my horse archers as well to try to silence them. You know, just, just try to scare them off. Try to beat them in a skirmish. So that does eventually scare them off. It was going for my general, so I was getting my general out of there. Uh, but yeah, back to this, this uh, constant cab charges. I'm going to go for the, the next archer unit. So this is pretty huge, right? I mean, since we are losing the skirmish phase, I had to use my cab aggressively here uh, to try to really soften up his archers, get rid of these archers, because they are chewing up a lot of our forces, uh, more specifically the elven archers. All right, so we do actually have some snow trolls on the battlefield. Uh, so Gundabad is sending over um, snow trolls. And here we go. Here comes another charge. It's just crazy. It's relentless. Uh, yeah, didn't see that coming. I thought the trolls were going to commit to the front line, but they didn't. They actually went for my my cav. But we are getting some friendly fire uh, from Harad, 
who is trying to kill my own my my horses, but instead accidentally hitting his own shadow guard or shadow bows. I'm gonna disengage once again. I can't believe it. This royal guard still has 32 men, but they're they're shaking. Oh, now they're steady, looking for another target to kill. Let's see who am I gonna go for? Oh yes, there's a juicy target of guardians of Car and Doom. Nice, get it, get it. Wonderful, wonderful charge. We got another pike unit going into the front line, supporting the uh, supporting the guards of Orthanc from Isengard. The Fountain Guard are doing their best to hold the line. Excellent. It is supporting some wardens in the back. Again, I'm keeping a lot of my cav in reserve, just trying to watch the flank from um, from Harad, who could easily or Rune, I should say, who's trying to swoop in at any second and trying to get behind our lines. That's why I'm being super conservative with my cav, just keeping them alive and making sure they have a presence on the battlefield. Uh, this is my final charge with my royal guard, trying to, trying to take out his royal archers. Unfortunately, Rune, this is the uh, the bodyguard where the general died right away. Uh, he's going to now use his cab to finally silence my cab. But they did so much damage in those multiple charges in the back ranks of this army. Which I'm pretty happy about. I'm very happy about. So I'm down to five, but I'm just going to keep him in the fight. Try to kill as many archers as possible. And he's going he's gonna to disengage his cab, get him out of there. So more and more of the, the, the orcs are charging in. And uh, once again, let's do some slow-mo and just really analyze the battlefield. So uh, the orcs of Gundabad are now committing a lot of forces to this flank because they notice there's a small gap here where they could, you know, keep on sending over troops and just eventually break through and cause some issues for the flanks of our army. Also, the trolls are causing a lot of uh, issues for the fountain guard. They're doing the best they can trying to hold them back. All right, so I think at this point I'm trying to find another another gap to run through, which I, it looks like there's a gap right here, but I don't know if that's wide enough. And look at the elves! Look at this! They just got butchered by by the enemy archers. It's just insane. It's crazy. I was expecting these those elves to just murder people, but the axemen of Erebor. Oh, look at that armor! Look at that axemen armor. That is fresh. So yeah, they're trying to hold the flank. I have to send over some cab to try to do a hammer, uh, well not hammer and anvil, but just a charge into the side of these guys. Not the greatest charge. I was a little disheartened by that. Very unfortunate. And then back up here, look at this. This is, this is really fun. Uh, so I had to send up my horse archers this way because he had his horse archers up here shooting down at the forces in the back lines. So I had to chase him down with my horse archers. And this is when I noticed, like, oh crap, this is a trap. There's there's some uh, wind riders here, so I need to get my cav back. It's that, that's I'm not gonna win this engagement, but unfortunately the wind riders are extremely fast. And my guys decided to slow down for whatever reason, so they're gonna. Yep, look at that. They're like, let's engage the enemy. That's a great idea. You know, I think we can win this one. No, it's not a good idea. They need to get out of there, and I need to keep those horse archers alive because it's the only defense against his horse archers. And once again, I'm still just trying to charge in my Rohan Riders. My Riders of Rohan. Into the flanks of the Guardians of Karn Doom. But they're just so heavily armored that my charges just don't seem to be doing that well. Alright, what is this? Oh, now we got the archers m maneuvering. So, Harad is now moving his archers, getting him to lose formation. I think he's going to try to use the slight slope. Get that terrain advantage. And once again, I'm power throughing the center lines. And I'm going to go for those archers. I'm going to go for anything, really, that I can charge and effectively, effectively break down. So I do see some archers over on this flank. Uh, these are my royal guard. They don't have their lances out, though. They have their swords. Which is, oh, there we go. Lances out. Charge in. Wonderful. Excellent charge. He was trying to run out, of, run away to try to soften up the charge. Uh, I did, You know, it was a good charge, but it wasn't that effective because the royal archers are just so well protected, well armored. But at least I'm silencing these archers for a little bit. So now I'm going to break away. Look for more opportunities. I see that we have the Brotherhood of the Lance headed towards me. So I'm going to go to the backs of the Witch Realm Hunter Guard. Another tough unit. Ugh, that, was, that, was a, that was a decent charge. That was a decent charge. Trying to help Gondor and the Dwarves hold this front line. Because they are having a tough time. Now, yep, now the Royal Guard coming around this way. 
You can see that Isengard is keeping back some reserves to protect to prevent the the uh, or my cab from charging, you know, getting hammer and anvil strikes. And we're gonna slow it down once again, just so we don't miss anything. So my cab getting out of there as quickly as possible. You know, not engaging those spears, also avoiding his lancers. Uh, Gondor still ho still holding the line. I still have a lot of cav left over. Again, just trying to keep him alive for for Rune, who hasn't fully committed his cav yet. So Rune, you see, that's the tricky thing about Rune is like he sent a lot of cav around the flank, which is clever because it's it's got me constantly thinking about the you know the flank of our army, the the rear rank of our army. But he's so far away from his allies that I just have free free range to just run around and attack his his reserves back here. So that's why, you know, that's the risk he's going to have to take. So it looks like I did charge into his black guard, which is where his general is located. Now I'm going to move on to the next unit. So we're going to go back to normal speed. I see all of his archers left over here. Oh, Gondor's general has fallen. So we lost one general. They lost one general. My cav charged. Wonderful charge into the Shari guard. But unfortunately, I am losing a lot of royal guard to his arrows. And then here comes the Brotherhood of the Lance. Very unfortunate indeed. Very, very unfortunate. All right, let's head back here. Let's see what's happening. Oh, once again, uh, I've got my Riders of the Fold in the uh, the circle formation, but he charged in his Wind Riders to try to take him out, which is exactly what he's doing. So now we have no answer to his horse archers in the back. That's that's not a good thing. The elves, yes, this is what we need the elves to do. They need to fall back this way and try to fire back at those horse archers since they're up there. So I was quite happy that the elves were doing that. Very good move. Oh god, okay, slow-mo guys, slow-mo, really slow. Jeez, we forgot a huge, huge moment in the battle. So this is where uh, Rune decides to just fully commit his cav, and he's got a ton of my calves surrounded. My general is now fighting to the bitter end against this uh, runic cav. So yeah, he sent in the wind riders and they're just so devastating. So I'm trying to group up what I have left in my cab. And look at this, a unit of 24 break to the site of the wind riders. So they're gonna disengage and just flee for their life. Look, 22 men, 22, why? Why, how could you betray us like this? Ugh. So really it's just down to my general and I think a, a royal guard unit, that's about it. And yeah, now his cav is just overwhelming our, our forces, giving us a taste of our own medicine that we were given them a couple minutes ago. Very, very unfortunate. Very unfortunate indeed. And now we have some infantry, the black guard able to push through the gaps and our ranks are crumbling. We are falling apart. Gondor is reforming his lines. He's kind of trying to form a protective, uh, like almost like a noob box. You know, he's just trying to group up his forces so they can put up some kind of stand. Uh, my Cav, my General, again, my General's a very expensive unit, so he's actually pretty good at fighting in outnumbered situations. So he's doing all right. He's killing a lot of these Wind Riders, which is a light Cav, I believe, right? Yeah, it's a light Cav, so uh, it's not going to be the end of the world to be stuck in a prolonged melee against them. But he still has a lot of Cav, I believe. And look at that, the Guards of Orthanc teaming up with the, the Guardians of Karn Doom surrounding these dwarves. So unfortunate. And we pretty much killed each other's cav at this point. Uh, we really didn't have that many uh, cav units left. So really it's going to come down to the infantry. I'm charging what I have left of my cav into the backs of the, of the Witch Realm Blackguard. And here's the general. Which is supposed to be Ozog. <laughs> supposed to be Ozog. Um, so yeah, we charged in like so. And uh, he's going to he's gonna counter charge with the Brotherhood of the Lance. He's got one dude trying to chase down my cav. And yeah, I'm going to disengage there. Nope, nope. I'm going to go in again. I'm going to try to kill this guy. Come on, kill him. Alright, let's head back over to the, the main fight. The, the epic last stand of Gondor. Oh, here's the... Okay, so we do have a little bit of the Wind Rider. So he still has a little bit of Cav left. Uh, so I'm going to break away. Once again, my general is going to go for, you know, 
just fight for fight for something. And there goes the dwarven general. He's dead now. That's unfortunate. Uh, I think I think the elven general and my general are the only ones left alive. So we charge into the royal archers just to get one last punch in, you know, just one last huzzah in, in the battle and hopefully kill enough to make a difference in the fight. But as you can tell, looking at the balance of power, it's not looking too good for the good guys. And uh, we're, we're going to have to... Oh, there goes my general. My general has fallen. Fighting brave. Uh, you know, I'd much rather him die in the battle than run away. So I can't complain there. His horse archers are breaking. That's good to see. And uh, really, this is what the battle is going to come down to. An epic infantry fight. The cab is dead. Most of the archers are dead, sort of. Harad still has a ton of archers. But Gondor's infantry is just so tough. So glad we had them on our side. So that's going on. Unfortunately, he is sending in the reinforcements. Uh, I think Glowbox, he actually broke the rules and brought seven units. It's really not a big deal. I mean, this took so long to set up, so I'm like, I'm not going to restart this. Just play with seven units. It's fine, you know? It is completely fine. But it looks like he's got some fountain guard that are going to try to protect the, the rear of the formation. But that's kind of difficult because now he's taking on some hunter guard or hammer guard. So yeah, pretty cool fight. Gondor doesn't, give, you know, they don't give up without a fight. I think the dwarves are pretty much dead. I don't really see them with a lot of troops. Once their general died, their army pretty much died with them. Yeah, so here's the, uh, the nail in the coffin, essentially. We got a, a full unit of guardians of Karn Doom. Uh, they're going to flank around the Wardens, and that's going to be a big issue for Gondor. Also, we got some archers going in. A legendary last stand from the men of Gondor. Here comes the guards of Orthanc. So yeah, I think it's pretty obvious who's going to win this one based on what we see here. Uh, the good guys are surrounded. My army's dead. The dwarven army's dead. The elves are technically still alive, but he's like running away. I don't know what he's doing over here. He's just trying to keep his archers alive as long as possible. Trying to snipe out the Hashari shadow, uh, shadow, shadow bows or just shadows. They're just called shadows. Uh, but finally, they're going to have to fight into melee, switching to their long blades there. Oh, nice. Getting some kills. Uh, but it's not going to be enough. Yeah, here comes some more Guardians of Karn Doom. Coming over here to finish the job and kill these elves. And Gondor breathing their last breath. So we're going to fast forward as we watch Gondor get crushed by the orcs. And there you have it, guys. The orcs are victorious. The baddies are, are winning and it looks like they are going to win. So the elves, uh, yeah, I was trying to tell them to admit defeat. Like, there's no way the elves are going to win this one. But whatever, we'll enjoy the last stand. And there you have it. There you have it. Average defeat. So it was a really close battle. Uh, I think it was. I mean, uh, the kills, everyone did pretty well. Now, the dwarves only got 443. But some people were saying that the dwarves are pretty underpowered in this, excuse me, in this mod. Which, uh, I can get. Like, the, it seems like the Dwarven units have really small units. Like, this small scale. Uh, it could be just because they're super veteran. Uh, maybe if we just got Gondor Swordsmen and then Dwarven, uh, Pikes, we could have we could have done a little bit better. Not really too sure. Look at this. The Elven Archers did well. 600, even though they had a rough start. I got 585, which is pretty good considering my army size, which is the smallest army next to Harad. 
And now Harad, the other Cav player, getting 270 kills. It doesn't seem like a lot, but remember, we had less troops than them. So it's still very, very well. Or he did very well. And then Isengard getting 281. And then the two Globox, the two clan buddies, uh, getting the most on their side. 766 and 956 from, uh, from Harad. So uh, that's going to wrap up today's video. We are going to look at the results, though. So, let's see. Who got the most kills? 253 by my Royal Guard. The other one getting 90. My General getting 100. Uh, unfortunately, my Heavy Lancers not doing so great. One got 62. The other one got 16. That's probably the one that broke with 22 left in their unit. And then the Riders of the Fold getting 64, which is okay for, you know, horse archers. Uh, but, yeah, that was a really fun fight. Now, this is a very unique battle, but probably not a battle that we'll see too often. Because it took me like an hour and a half, hour and a half to set this up, which is a bit ridiculous. I mean, you know, any medieval two battle with eight players is going to be like there's a 40% chance that it's not going to work because people crash. It's a very old game. So maybe we could do this more often in like newer titles like um, uh, Warhammer and whatnot. But I would love to do it again. If you guys have any replays like this, be sure to send it in. That would be really fun to watch. Uh, but it's definitely a very interesting strategy wise because you only can do one role you know you just hope that your allies will make the the best decision so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this one if you did be sure to leave a like a comment share and of course subscribe for more epic battles thank you guys so much and i'll see you next time